This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasts with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Hey guys, it's the awesome cast, <laughs> Sorgatron, at Sorgatron on the Twitter. That's not my real name. It's Mike Sorg. That's who we are. It's the awesome cast. That's we're who talking, we are. We're talk both tech. Mike. Hi, you're Mike. I'm Mike. He's Mike. Uh, we're talking tech, getting geeky here from the hellacious Mayhem Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. And uh, with me, he's on the couch. He's here. Studio he's supposed a. to be here. I didn't screw up communications this week at all. Studio John Mike. John Chichilla at ChillaTech.net. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> cause it's .net from his iPad into your face. I might steal that. <laughs> I might grab that recording right off of here. There you go. And every time you hit my site, it's gonna be like 1985. All at, well, not that far in ago. your face. In your face. Here you have the little un- under construction <laughs> gift guy. Like, just like some GeoCity stuff. Some, some nice oh. HTML, like doing the the red LED type looking scroll. I was reading an article uh, interview with one Cole Cabana uh, wrestling podcaster extraordinaire, Art of Wrestling. And uh, I'm reading it. I'm reading it. And I'm like, something's weird about this. Did this open in a? Because this can't be right. Because I'm looking around. And I'm like, I'm on MySpace.com. Is this interview on MySpace.com? Did this open in Netscape Navigator 4.0? I mean, did I'm <laughs> like, no. This has to be a trick. This opened like in an iframe in MySpace.com, <laughs> right? But no, it was like a MySpace.com interview, and that was the thing that happened. Hey, you know who's with us in 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 the future? It's Alex Cars of alexandercars.com. If you want to check out the stuff he's got. Um, I don't know if he's holding still or if he's frozen. Please, <laughs> please say something. Okay. Oh, wow. He, that, was, that was pretty cool. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> he could be like a bomb <laughs> like, technician. I don't know what to say. Join us from California. Studio. Oh, sorry. From Studio M. Studio M. M. As in Mountain in california that's right you're up there up in the greater like i don't know is it even like the la area where you're at i'm learning geography since i'm gonna be in your greater area that sounds wrong um in in a couple weeks here um and we and we've lost alex (laughs) (laughs) but alex is is uh, you've been on this show before right right Mm -hmm. this one yep yep i've been i've been on just about everything Yes, he's been all over the place, and of course, contributing a whole battle. Got to work that deal out one of these days. A boss battle? That's not my game anymore. So you got to talk to somebody (laughs) else about that. So um, I I have slimmed (laughs) things down. Uh, Maybe if you want to be on fishing without bait, we can we can talk. But um, (laughs) you know, but uh, uh, how you with Baja cars? But anyways, uh, this is the (laughs) awesome cast. We're going to be talking with Alex and Chilla here in a moment. But check out everything at awesomecast.net. You can subscribe to us. You can check us out. Awesomecast at SorgatronMedia.com. Awesomecast on the Twitter, the Facebook. We have a great Facebook group. You guys can uh, discuss some things over there of the tech nature. Let us know stories that you're you're interested in throughout the week. um, Because that does does shape a little bit of what we do talk about here on the show. Please subscribe to Rate Us on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And, of course, uh, our friends at RiversEdgePGH.com. Thursdays, 8 a.m. after Funny Money. And also, uh, related to that, if you are in the Millville area and you're attending Millville May Days this Friday, I'm going to be there from 1 to 5 hanging with the Rivers Edge people. And there might be zombies. You never know. You never know. Uh, But uh, also, uh, we'll have some Sorgatron Media representation there on Saturday as well. So uh, if you're in the area, please stop down for that and uh, check out all the cool stuff over there. And, of course, you can join us here live every Tuesday, live.sorgatronmedia.com at 6.30 p.m. Eastern, where you get to see me making funny faces as Alex forgets to uh, uh, mute his mic when he calls in and walks away. Or, uh, or, uh, or, or we tell stories about the gas station that ran out of gas or whatever else may happen. Or we help Chilla find his phone. Um, and uh, you can also support us, patreon.com slash awesomecast, our good friends, Thistle C Business Develop, at Thistle C on the Twitter, and the Michael Fedora Show, Mike Fedora Show, 
on the Twitter as well. Thank you so much. Our EPs, our executive producers, um, uh, supporting the show for a good while now. And you guys can too, but you don't have to. You can also share the show uh, with a friend, rate us wherever you can, and just help the awesome cast universe grow. Thank you so much to everybody who has and everybody that hangs out with us here on Tuesdays. Um, now it's time for the awesome thing of the week. I let the girls take over for one week and I forget the format. So let's roll into it with uh, Chilla. So I have the a, originally I was going to come in and say, you know, I'm really interested in the, the Microsoft's new word flow keyboard, Ooh. which is pretty cool. And the thing that I like about it is it puts it in, in a um, single single handed mode that kind of puts the the keyboard on an arc, you can use it left-handed or right-handed for that arc, and it kind of follows the arc of your thumb um, on the on the device. And it, it, it'll do actually kind of like a swipe type um, style of being able to type where you can just kind of drag your finger across words. Um, you can set the a theme, so you can kind of set the background of the keyboard. You can set a bunch of different things, and I thought it was a pretty cool concept. Um, it takes a lot for me to want to switch keyboards because the keyboard, I find myself going from whatever my default keyboard is going to be to the emoji keyboard. And that's about all the further I want to go. I don't I want now, to pull I, up. I now have too many emoji keyboards, <clears throat> by the way, <laughs> for instance, I, I find it cumbersome. As soon as you get past that third keyboard, you Every time you tap the thing, it goes to the next keyboard and the next keyboard, and the next keyboard. And, and to get back to that. Sorry, Macklemore wants to play us out here. First, I don't even know where it's playing right now. Sorry. That's OK. Um, to get back to the original keyboard that you kind of that you're that you're trying to get to. Um, and I just. What? Oh, um, you have to you have to keep hitting the little globe and it takes forever if you have a bunch of keyboards. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, this is pretty cool. I think I'm going to run with this. And then today I saw Google updated their keyboard. Now theirs is going to be Android only, um, but they do a bunch of additional auto correction. They have now have a one handed typing. Um, so they've adjusted a lot of their designs. So I'm like, hmm, that's pretty cool. And then towards the end of the day, I now want to uninstall Microsoft Wordflow because I don't want to go above too many keyboards. But Giphy Keys, um, which if you're familiar with their keyboard, you used to be able to type into a search window and it kind of gave you GIFs that you could just throw into your text messaging conversation. Yeah. The pain about that was then, so you would have to search, insert the GIF, insert, then flip back to your keyboard to start typing. Well, their new keyboard has the ability to search and insert GIFs with keys in it. So I'm like, hmm. So now I'm going to try this one out. And I'm probably going to be back to where I was of just flip flopping through keyboards. Wait, wait, wait. So I don't know if I fully understood how this keyboard works. The Giphy keys? Yeah. So Giphy's old keyboard. Yeah. Well, not the Flexi with the Giphy built in, but their old keyboard was just a search box with, with letters that you... So it was a search box. You would search for the GIF you wanted to, to insert. You would... Pick your GIF, insert it into the text message, and hit send. <coughs> there was no way to use the old keyboard to actually type in a text message. So you'd switch to the Giphy keyboard, search for a GIF, insert it, hit enter, flip back to your original normal keyboard, and then type out a, type out your text. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This now, their new update, allows you to insert GIFs and type text into the content of the text message. Oh, so yeah, it's actually a, a different keyboard. So you're you're gonna have to update. That's because I was like, is this an update to the one I already have? Because I got the Giphy keyboard, and now I have to make a decision. So should I just can the old one? I guess so. Because this is the, to me, this is the best of both worlds. Okay. It lets you keep. It lets you type text and search and insert. Games. So now you can live in this keyboard yes. instead of switching as needed. Yes. Oh, can I get rid of the original keyboard? Probably not. I think you can. The, the only thing is it will automatically pop back up for passwords. Of course. So that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Um, wow. I, wow. So the, it seems like, like over the last two days, everybody's key, everyone's keyboard happy. And to me, it, it's, a, it's a little rough because I've been through bringing up my phone here. 
Swipe, Swift Key, Theme Board, Gift Keyboard, Flexi, and Wordflow. Did you do the Star the Starbucks one from last week? I saw it, but I did not. I did I've not. I've been sending uh, uh, latte sipping unicorns to everybody this week, so <laughs> you know. I'm I'm hoping that what I'd really like to see, I'd like to see Disney do a keyboard and give me like the Avengers emoticon pack and the mm. Star Wars emoticon pack, and I guess you could throw in some Mickey Mouse and whatnot in there, but. I'd really like to see that Disney, that Disney keyboard. If, if Starbucks can do it, I don't understand why Disney can't. All right. So get your keyboarding on. Um, so, so, so collectively, if I had to pick and I wanted to add one keyboard right now of those three, I would, I would do Giphy keys, Giphy keys, Giphy keys. Yeah. So, so I mean the Microsoft one, like generally how was it? Like it it's was, actually really good and really accurate. Mm-hmm. And what I liked was, I did like the one handed. I mean, I don't have the smallest thumb, but I also don't have the largest thumb in the world. And to be able, it was really easy to kind of on that arc. Type, which is what I I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought an arced style keyboard across the phone would be that comfortable. It actually really was. I also liked the way when you swipe, if you swipe typed it kind of gave you trailing dots to kind of let you know where you were and where you were going, which I, which I did really like. Um, maybe they can get Giphy keys built in. I don't know. We'll someone, see. someone needs to make the ultimate keyboard. Best of all the worlds. All right. Alex cars. What's your awesome thing of the week? <clears throat> My awesome thing has to do with, uh, give me a second. Well, what I, here <clears throat> so amazon prime uh as you guys know one of the things one of the benefits of getting amazon prime besides getting your uh free two-day shipping uh, is uh something called amazon prime video uh, their answer to the netflix and hulu and something that they started doing recently uh, i don't remember when they started doing it but they started having add-on subscriptions so you get stuff like stars, Showtime, uh, those kind of things, and then something, certain things that are a little bit more obscure, like uh, a service called Shutter, which focuses on horror films. Uh, there's even s- stuff for like Korean dramas, just different things like that. And there's a little bit of something for everybody, as I like to put it. And so I went ahead and took the took the jump and signed up for a free trial for the Showtime add-on has been pretty good i found some very interesting shows and movies to check out with it and so it was interesting to kind of see like the different levels and like the different pricing i would say uh for example after a 30-day trial the showtime add-on is 8.99 a month and something like shutter gives you a seven day trial and then it's 4.99 a month and so it's just been interesting kind of finding those little additions to the Amazon Prime video service where you're not necessarily having to sign up for completely separate things with separate apps. You can kind of keep them to one app. I really like this idea. Yeah, and and, and on top of this, um, there's been word that Hulu, who already does something similar with Showtime right now, Mm -hmm. um, is going to start doing um, like ESPN and Disney channels as add-ons uh, sometime next year, I think they said. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this this bundling thing is, is like, between this and Sling TV is adding different channels and bundles all the time, it seems. Um, you know, this is kind of the next stage of, of what what our cord cutting or, our, or our, our TV watching can be, I guess. So now, if I subscribe to this, so if I'm a Prime subscriber and then I subscribe to Stars. Mm-hmm. Does that mean mm-hmm. I watch the stars shows through the Amazon Prime app, or do I use the stars app? Uh, or... You'd use the Amazon Prime, like the Amazon Video app, basically. That's can what I, I found use... with the Showtime. At least, can I use like the Showtime to go? You know what um, I'm saying? I think. Yeah. No. No. I. I. But. Yeah. No. I think. I think these are just like add-ons that you access through the Amazon Video app, basically. So, um, so, oh, that's a bummer. well, yeah, so you, you want, 
what's the difference? Because like, if they're providing all so, the so same here, content, so the Amazon Prime app isn't on Apple TV. <gasps> oh no! But yeah, the Showtime, the Showtime one is. app is the Stars app is the. I get I get Amazon Prime app on my and here's where here's where it gets funny, right? I get the Amazon Prime app on my TiVo, and I get mm. Hulu and HBO. But on TiVo, I don't get Showtime. Mm. We're still in this boat. <laughs> We're still I mean, in this boat where apps aren't cross-platform. Yeah. We're so, seriously yeah. still. I mean, it's less. I mean, it's less, right? Like, I have WWE Network on basically everywhere I would want to watch it at this point. Mm -hmm. And each new device I get is a better experience for that. You know? Right. Um, I haven't. I haven't. I don't even think my Amazon Fire is plugged in right now. <laughs> but <laughs> Which means I also have not been watching any Amazon that I pay for technically um so it's an interesting problem too i need it on our tv so that i can use it in another room that, that, that's what would make more sense right i just don't have enough i don't have any more hd tvs uh but anyways uh, I, no i think this is going to be really interesting and 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 kind of sad that it's not otherwise other than that there's not much of a problem if they're just providing all that same content right mm -hmm. yeah okay Cool. Hey, um, go ahead. I was going to say the other thing I did discover that's been a little bit of a bummer, but I can understand. So, you know, with the so on Amazon Video, uh, they had started allowing Prime, like the Prime Video subscribers, to download the video onto their device, mm -hmm. um, depending and like. So, like, if you had it on your iPad, you could download like one video at a time through the Prime Video. Uh, I got the Amazon Fire tablet, like the newer ones, the $50 ones. And so there's not that same restriction. But I did discover when I, after signing up for the, the add-on that like stuff that's presented only through Showtime, through the Showtime add-on, you can't download to the device. So yeah, probably. a little bit of a bummer just because like I don't, I don't have – like I have li a little bit of limited access to Wi-Fi where I'm at, but that's you know otherwise it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, and that's the problem. As as you know, we're trying these new avenues and and these add-ons and and everything. Uh, they're just going to have different rights, you know. Maybe eventually they'll oh, yeah. update it, you know. Ooh, I can yeah. get, I can add on a B fit with all of the <laughs> Jillian Michaels that I would ever want to watch. I think you can get that free over the Xbox One. Really? Yeah, I think there's a free app for <laughs> Well, it's an add-on <laughs> subscription on here. Or Daring Docs, Curiosity Stream. Um, that shutter that you mentioned was mm -hmm. actually, I saw advertised when I was uh, watching something on WWE Network the other day. That's oh, yeah, what, they that's... have they have their own, because it's, it's, they have their own kind of service. It's, it, they kind of promote it as like the Netflix of horror. Yeah, exactly. They like to put it. So like you can actually get like a shutter app Ooh. for your devices and you can access it on the computer. But I've, I've heard varying levels of, of quality, like as far as how well the service works. Mm -hmm. So and if yeah. you're getting through Amazon, you know what you're getting, right? So mm -hmm. there you go. There's a, there's a lot of stuff. This is great. They all sound like, they all sound like just like the channels you didn't know you got on a cable system, but um, yeah. <laughs> but still, you know that there's a lot of options there. All right, guys, my awesome thing is I, I yeah, this is awesome to me. Uh, so you guys know we, we've been talking for a bit on uh, some 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 of my fellow podcasters. We've been talking about how I've been concerned about our host. I've been concerned for a while, and I had been investigating new hosts. I've been actually all my clients I put on 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 Lipson, right? But this podcast, everything else has been on talkshoe.com. We met the pot the talk shoe people at Podcamp Pittsburgh before it had a number. And by the way, we're going into eleven here in August. Um and uh thirteenth and fourteenth if you if you want to mark that on your calendar. Uh but anyways. Uh so you look at the website. And it has not been updated for years, but there's definitely people that are using it, right? Uh, Techno Granny, somebody that was on their show, her show uh, a while back, uh, still uses it. Great service for them. They get to do the call-in show thing, you know, much like, you know, Blog Talk Radio and, and Spreaker, I think, do something to that regard. Uh, so I, I've been worried. It, it's one of those where it's been dormant for so long. 
Uh, there's been no interaction for so long, and you're like, this is a this is one of those things that could just disappear tomorrow, right? Like they ran out of money. I don't even know why, how it was still going, right? I think it's a server in somebody's closet, and <laughs> as with most startups, right? Um, but they're a local, so I was kind of sticking it out and, and seeing where we could go, and working on my next option. Well, learn today that I'm trying to find the article, but I do have a tweet. Uh, that could go along with it. Oh, wait, I'll track that back. That'll make the most sense. Uh, they actually have been acquired. Uh, they have been acquired by a company that I will never pronounce right until I have a conversation with somebody called uh, Iotum. Iotum? Iotum. Iotum? I-O-T-U-M. I-O-T-U-M. Oh, Iotum. Iotum? <laughs> wait, you know this? I don't know. I don't know. I figure since you're so close to Silicon Valley in comparison, maybe this is just uh, second nature to you. Uh, but it has been acquired, and uh, and and they said, uh, well, uh, basically that this this will move people forward, right? Um, freeconference.com is apparently what these guys are behind. I've never been to freeconference.com. Actually, I'm going to go check it out now, um, and I think that will probably be a pretty good sign. To, of what to come uh i was tweeting about it today and got a response as apparently my twitter does lately uh jason martin who is actually the ceo of iodom jason let me know if i'm saying that right um but i uh, said they'll be enhancing talk shoe and rolling out new features this year uh you'll love it he assures me uh and then he says thanks for sticking with us we'll be rolling out new features this year beta group for you hell yeah i didn't even see this response i'm getting into the beta group <laughs> hold on i'm responding i'm responding to my new friend jason but um but no either way I, it, it, it's uh uh good for some of us the old school pod, pod cult podcasters that have been on this service for a while and nice to see that it's not something that's going to fade away because it was a novel concept back in the day when it started i mean we used it had its own chat client which was a little weird and timeline based and it was one of the uh, one of the ways where we kept interactivity with our shows you know we've been live we're always live we were that back then live streaming we're, we're live on talk shoe um some people will probably still have the tone of talk shoe in their head from when it used to be at the start of the old wrestling mayhem shows uh but really cool that this isn't just we're going to acquire you and shut you down somebody actually still sees promise in talk shoe.com talk shoe by the way if you're curious it's like talk show but a shoe like on your foot right um but basically, the the technology was uh, it was to the point where you know easy podcast starting. You could start a podcast basically by dialing a phone number with your phone landline. We didn't have cell phones, you know, or it could be cell phone, you know, but we didn't have iPhones or anything like that. But you usually basically use the phone bridge and dialed into their servers, and they recorded it, and then you could set up like a call in show through it. If they improve this thing, honestly, if they improve this thing. Um, I would consider going back to the idea of doing a call-in show. I mean, a lot of that, you know, I'd like to see what it compares to. Um, but you know, not turning this into a call-in show or anything like that, but like maybe, maybe doing an experimental show. Uh, there was a guy, uh, Eric Lanigan, I think his name was, uh, he did a show and it was on actually the Twit network for a while that was mostly around talk shoe and do talk, talk shoe and doing a, um, a call and talk show. Uh, so, you know, kind of interesting, you know, uh, roots there as well. And other, other decent shows have been on there, uh, through the years as well. So, uh, but yeah, uh, so keep an eye out for that. And, um, I'm still kind of curious what freeconference.com is. All right. I think I've seen free, freeconference.com. Uh, yeah. I was wondering, like that, that seems like it's kind of up your alley, right? And it's a teleconferencing site. I mean, it looks, I mean, it's a little more updated than what, what talk to has been in recent years um, as far as things go. So um, do, do, do meet anyone, anywhere, anytime without the fuss. Free conference calls and free online meetings and HD audio, video, and screen share. There you go. Now with free. HDs. Now with all the HDs. If we get the HDs on the talk shoes, we get all the Ds in the shoes, we'll be good to go. <laughs> Have you ever seen Ring, this, while we're talking about free services? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Ring Plus? 
I've heard of Ring Plus. Isn't that advertised on a bunch of Twitch stuff? Is it? Ring Plus? Uh, Ringplus.net. I'm curious. Adding both of these to my bookmarks as we speak. So mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, you can, it's, remember like net zero? <laughs> <laughs> it's the net zero for cell phone. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. You can get for the, the truly free plan, you get 125 cell minutes, 50 SMS messages, and 15 meg of download and upload. Is this like is this like the um, um, the freedom pop of cell phones? I th- I think and you can bring your own device to this carrier. They they want you to be on Virgin Mobile or Sprint. Mm-hmm. So they're CDMA. Yeah. So that's kind of an older network. A little bit. Yeah, but then they get. I mean, for wait, open API for application developers. Yeah. What? What are they doing with that? But then like, so to start, you can get in the, you can be on the, I love, they, they named all their plans, right? Yeah. So the, the Kadinsky plan, he's probably like a founding IPO guy for this company <laughs> for, for 40 bucks to start and 15 bucks auto top up, which I don't know what that means. Um, you get to- top up means <clears throat> that when you run out of, you kind of pre buy the next next segment of minutes. I remember this from Freedom Pop because I had a couple surprise bills for that. So you have unlimited cell minutes, unlimited SMS, four gig of LTE, unlimited Wi Fi calling. Hmm. Five bucks a month, ten bucks a month. If you really don't use much of your phone, this may be the thing for you. Or if you only use like a specific thing, like you don't use many minutes, but you use a lot of data. Yeah. Or yeah. vice versa. Like they have, they actually have the Rembrandt plan. <laughs> Twenty bucks a month gets you no minutes, no SMS, but it gets you two gig of data. Hmm. <laughs> it's an interesting. It's an interesting concept. I didn't mean to hijack. That. What's the other one? Ting. I have heard of Ting. Ting was another one that again, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, pay what you use kind of thing. Uh, it's been advertised again on Twit Network uh, a, a great deal, and uh, yeah, they're still around, and and they looked like they were a pretty decent one. Um, we need to get a report, but uh, a friend of ours is on Google Fi. Oh, Mister uh, Mister Box is on uh, the Google Fi which is a combination Wi-Fi, Sprint, and T-Mobile situation. And again, it's a pay what you use. use. Or at which to the point where you say, oh, I'm going to use X amount, and they will actually refund you if you did not use that amount. So he said he was doing very well with it when we talked with I, him the other day. I think your phone has to be Google Fi capable. Right, right. He has the 5X? 5P. 5P. The, the, the nexus 5. 5p i think um whatever that lower one is yeah. so which is a Wait, nice looking film it's a very comparable to like a success i feel so there you go but i've, I've heard to google Fi, you can actually get it to work in your iphone what yeah you can if you can get the sim card and you have the right phone you can use it. Not the right phone as in like the right, right carrier. You have the right carrier. Like probably like you have a T-Bobo or, or maybe a, a carrier unlock. I don't remember. That but might be. That might be worth could do looking that. into. That'd be awesome. That'd be really awesome. All right, guys. You know what's awesome? Slice. 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 Slice on Broadway. Our good friends. Our good friends providing pepperoni pizza for mm. fine Pittsburgh podcasts. Now residing at PNC Park Home on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Have we figured out if they deliver yet? I need to call over downtown. There. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't think that they don't even have the the PNC one really listed on their site yet. Hmm. So yeah, location they Beachview Carnegie. Well, hey, let's tweet them and find out. Um, um, hey, uh, awesome cast tweeter uh, Missy, uh, why don't you tweet uh, Slice and say Chilla wants to know. Uh, do you deliver? And let's see. Let's do see you if, del- does the stadium do you have- location deliver to the city? That's right. That's right. <laughs> they would, I think. Do, I think I would be worried if you had just said, "Hey, do you guys deliver?" <laughs> well, yeah, we we deliver. Yeah, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> um, and 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 
Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, so great crew uh, down in Carnegie, down uh, uh, in Carnegie, PA, uh, as well as here in Beachview, along what used to be tracks up here. Currently a lot of construction. Of course, PNC Park. Um, great stuff. Awesome pizza. Rico and the gang down there. Um, great crew. Uh, and they will get to know you if you frequent their pizza. Trust me. Um, so go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. PGH underscore Slice on the tweeters. And, of course, Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the uh, Instagrams. And you'll get hungry, too. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. Okay. Uh, hey, sorry. Yes. You know what I'm going to ask you. I don't think there's any plans for a California uh, location yet. I mean, we have a Broadway in Long Beach. We have a Broadway. Uh, I'm just saying. <laughs> just letting you know. <laughs> just putting it out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll, we'll put it out to guys. Alex, tweet them <laughs> and say, hey, I'm I out here. Did. Oh, you already did? Oh, great. <laughs> I, I I made that tweet already. Definitely. I'm still waiting to hear back. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into the rest of the shoe. Uh, we got a few things to talk about here, um, but unfortunately, my browser has crashed. Well, I want to talk about the thing that stuck on the screen that I did not uh, prepare for. Nope, that went away, too. Uh, therefore, uh, Chilla, do you have the next thing queued up while I try to recover this thing? Sure do. So if you're familiar with my lookings in on um, home automation, um, a company named Samsung a Ooh. while back. Who? Who? They, they procured smart things um, in a major acquisition. And they were going to kind of this was going to be their their jump into home automation technologies and whatnot. They, they talked a lot about the, the technologies at Samsung Developer Conference 2016 um, big deal. I mean, and 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 this is the the reason I want to talk about this is because this is something that's near and dear to my heart too. Unfortunately, recently, University of Michigan researchers have found multiple security flaws in Samsung SmartThing platform that could allow malicious apps to unlock doors, remotely set access codes on smart home locks, falsely set off smoke alarms, put devices in vacation mode. And all the attacks showcased in the video require the users to install a malicious app from the SmartThings app store or click on a malicious link. Hmm. This does worry me, and I, I hope that people take this extremely seriously. Um, I personally have kind of a a emergency backout plan from home automation that if something did come up, I could quickly turn down all those types of devices. Mm -hmm. um, what worries me is Ma and Pa and, and Uncle Ted that don't have any clue as to what they're doing and they just bought this cool doohickey that lets them remotely turn on their lights or or it I have this like in my head like this this like you have a button on your phone that just like <laughs> That just like there's like actual charges on all the connectors <laughs> for all your smart things in your home. That just like you just you're just your home is filled with smoke and then none of the things work anymore. <laughs> like Anna, things is dead. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 actually a hey Siri command. If it's nighttime, there's a giant <laughs> flash and all the windows in your house and the neighbors are like I'm walking away. So, uh, but, but it it is something to think about. It's a this, problem, yeah. And here's. I don't know what's worse. Someone randomly turning on or off your lights, someone randomly adjusting your thermostat, or you leave your house and then you're locked out forever until you call the locksmith or bust out a window. What is worse? <laughs> like there's so many things that could go wrong in this scenario mm -hmm. that, that I definitely worry for, for someone that, that buys one of these devices because they think it's neat, but they don't think about, the ramifications of what could occur. And this is another reason. And, and I, people are going to say, oh, you, you just like everything Apple. But this is something, this type of thing, Apple takes very seriously. And it's why a lot of the devices won't even work on the HomeKit platform. Um, so something definitely look at if you have, if you have smart things devices, obviously be on the lookout for firmware updates coming up. Um, and if you're, if you're looking at these types of technologies, definitely think about, what you're using them for and how you're implementing them. Um, <clears throat> and we have webcams and we have thermostats and we have all kinds of stuff around the house. And that, 
that is one of my fears is that the house Skynet becomes self-aware and my house blows up or is really, really warm until I turn off the thermostat stuff. So uh, it's just it's just something to definitely think about and keep in the back of your mind if you're looking at this type of technology. Or you're worried about Skynet becoming self-aware because that is kind of cool in a way, but I don't want it to burn down your house. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. You know, the, only, the first thing I thought of, you know, when we're talking about smart homes is I think about the Disney Channel original movie, which I think was also called Smart House, about the one that develops like a, a motherly AI. I haven't seen I that know. one. This is not, that's, that's, that sounds like something that should be on our radar. Like, what, how, how, how long ago was that? This was like somewhere in the '90s or early 2000s, I think. Oh, wow, that, I and was because it, it, it had the it had I forgot her name, but it had the woman from Married with Ch- Children, like the mom from that, Peg as Bundy. like the AI of the the smart home. This sounds this sounds like a, a perfect option for <laughs> does this hold up? To do a little movie review here, so yeah. you don't remember the name of the movie? It was a Disney original. Yeah, I'm. Pr- I think it was Smart House, like or Smart Home, or something. Mm, movie. <laughs> Dis- Smart House, a TV Spines. movie, 1999. Oh yeah, that's oh, the one. Oh boy. <laughs> so can I stream it? Can I stream it? <laughs> All right, guys. I want to roll back with. Um, I don't know if this was original. Did I put this as? Yes, I did. Put this as app of the week. A uh, little crossover. We do have Alex on. Alex, of course, also does uh, power to the s- wait. No, power to the smarks dot com. Obsessed with wrestling. That's the website. Yeah. Occupy pro wrestling. Occupy pro wrestling. Um, and uh, so so it, it's fitting if I find something with a little bit of a crossover, but it's a legitimate app. I thought this was a joke. Um, of course. But uh, the Rock Clock. Dwayne the Rock Johnson just released a motivational alarm clock app. And uh, you you set up your goal, like I set up like workout, and you set up a, um, a wake my ass up at. I'm at the screen right now, and apparently you have the. Let's see, this is what you will wake up to. Hold on, I get a preview. Come on, give me a preview. Oh, there's your music to wake up to. This is called Silverback. The Rock can wake you up. This could be kind of fun, and 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 from there, so I'm I'm, I'm going to go with that. Uh, let's see, let's go. Let's wake up at uh, do 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 do. Let's get six thirty tomorrow morning. Um, keep the app open. Turn up your volume. Leave your phone on. Got it. And uh, rock time is 5.30 a.m. Want to wake up with DJ? Uh, So (laughs) you can set it to just wake up whenever the rock wakes up. (laughs) Apparently that day and toggle that on. Um, When you go to bed, hit sleep mode. Okay. And apparently as you go through here, it will actually give you stuff to motivate you. Uh, Today's message Again, okay, you know he's he's big on the Instagrams and and, and everything. So I mean, it has video. Yeah, it's got video on the app and everything. It's just a big motivational tool. I haven't figured out like what like like they they haven't tried to sell me anything yet. Uh, so I don't know where they're going from there. Uh, but it's a pretty cool app <laughs> to be honest. I think it's just the Rock being being the Rock or something, right? Um, and and already infinitely maybe more useful than um um ddp yoga uh the app uh but uh so check it out it's free it's um the rock clock yeah it's already uh notifying me to keep keep the sleep mode on and um and apparently it's going to uh uh, bug you to to this is some great stuff they have on here um yeah so the rock will motivate you and whatever you set your goal at and you can set an end date or no end date and uh it'll bug you with that so, hey Sorg, mm-hmm. don't go breaking my heart. Is this available for Android? It is. It is. 
Oh, I was going to expect you to be like, it I is. I have a new alarm clock. Not. He has a new alarm clock. Let me know how that rolls with It'll you. It'll drain your battery in 15 minutes. Probably. <laughs> like the rock. Rock says, get I, a Mofi. I have an outlet right by my bed, so it'll be okay. So now when it says keep it open, does it mean keep it open and the app has to be active, like front and center? Or does it mean keep it open and running in the background? I think running in the background. Okay. Like don't, don't swipe and close it or something like that. Is my guess here. All right. We only got a little bit longer. We have so many things that we could talk about here. Uh, Shilla. Well, actually, no. Oh, cars. Cars. It's your turn. What's the t- okay. Since you're on the TV okay. kick, let me, I, I was really curious when you, I saw you put this in the Slack earlier today. Um, let me know about Netflix. All right. So uh, I'll start with the headline here. Netflix knows which video thumbnails you're likely to click. So basically, uh, the company revealed in in, in, it, in a blog post, which I actually just started reading more recently, uh, that they reveal details of a testing system that determines the artwork you're likely to see. And they base this on a number of factors. They base it on engagement and views. Um, and this, like, a lot of different things kind of come into play, including stuff like what's kind of the best for a particular uh like a particular country audience um so like the picture that they have in the in gadget article shows like the different artwork for season two of unbreakable kimmy schmidt but if you go to the netflix blog on it they actually have stuff for like sense eight has different ones and they show like the kind of like they have different artwork that's kind of the top in germany versus the top in brazil or the U.S., etc. Um, they even found interesting, some other very interesting parts, uh, things out of their research, uh, including uh, visible, recognizable characters, and especially polarizing ones. So the example that they show is that they found that uh, two images of the villains from the Dragon's Race to the Edge film mm-hmm. actually outperformed some of the other images that they had. And so it's just it's it was very interesting to kind of see the different not only the research they did, but also just all the different factors that they put into like that kind of came into the research. This is actually something I've been considering because I've I've noticed uh, from app to app, you know, mm-hmm. I'm looking for a show and maybe I don't immediately recognize it because they used a different image than I'm used to seeing. And so I, yeah. I noticed that they were changing it periodically. But now I'm like, but interesting to see exactly why now yeah because i've been less trying to watch list things and just say oh hey i think i'm going to watch something on netflix what can i find to watch on netflix you know i'm trying because i had the big watch list and i was like i'm never getting to these let's just delete it and start over you know like eh, it'd be nice yeah, i too. still have the big watch list <laughs> yeah yeah and just like i this has been on my watch list for like four years i'm not i'm not gonna take the time to it i wonder if they keep that information and, and then build they uh, information do. off of that they do there's a yeah. there was an article a few months ago about um about you know the watch netflix knows the watch list stuff that you're never going to get to or something like that so no they they know they algorithm the hell out of these things by the way Side note on Netflix, completely watched the new Danger Mouse. As somebody mm. who watched the old Danger Mouse, um, <laughs> it is frantic and fun. Huh. It, Check that I out. give it a shot. I, I, and I'm trying to remember how much of it is references to the old Danger Mouse because it's been so long. But they do apparently also have the old Danger Mouse on there, too. So you can compare. It's definitely faster. So yeah. uh, I'm holding out for Count, uh, Count Duckula to come back. Mm. Or at least even the old ones, because I love yes. some Count Duckula. I don't think I ever watched yeah. that. <sighs> yeah, actually, it, it's funny you mentioned Danger Mouse and them. Uh, my brother, my little brother, is a huge fan of Danger Mouse and Count Duckula, that kind of stuff. Uh, we actually, we yeah. actually have the whole series on on DVD for uh, Danger Mouse, but Count Duckula, we haven't been able to find it like in Region One. That's for a whole season or uh, we found like season one but that was it so yeah i would definitely love to see count Duckula come to netflix what was the other um, one other darkwing duck darkwing duck i was in oh, that. it's the terror that yes. flaps in the night yes i actually didn't watch a lot of darkwing duck <laughs> watched a lot of dark sadly duck. yeah sure yeah all right uh from there uh we have uh 
first of all, you know, this is something that could have came in handy as we had a big thunderstorm, of course. Um, uh, uh, Still, still, still city studios. um, David Cicero. Um, The the big uh, lightning storm that we had the other night. He got one of uh, lightning striking the river. That was apparently apparently it made the Washington Post. Well, also they made Good Morning America. Uh, also, uh, you know, we have internet outages, right? And I had some internet problems a couple of weeks ago, and this could have been something handy as well. You guys know, you know, reset. What are the first thing they tell you to do? Reset your router. Well, Doug Durda of shouldidrinkthat.com. Go follow him, especially on Google Play Podcasts. Uh, but uh, this is when your internet goes out, according to Giz- Gizmodo, this smart plug resets your router until it works again. So, yeah, it'll reset your router. It's um, detecting it's a $60 uh, price tag on this thing. It's called the Reset Plug. And, uh, yeah, then you don't have to worry about it anymore. Can I get one that will just reset my modem every Tuesday morning so it's nice and clean for when I get to do this Tuesday night, maybe? You could do that with a regular everyday smart plug. Probably not this one. No, no. This is more a reactive kind of thing. But, like, if you, you can actually set... Your um, like if you had pretty much any home automation type plug, you could set a timer on it where it would turn off and on. Yeah, have it turn off at like 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 six a.m. Mm-hmm. and then, and then back turn on. back on at six oh one. Hmm. Uh, so there you go. Kind of a big fix to the problem of going and flipping the switch. But you know, if you're remote, because I, I had a problem when I was uh traveling last month where I had things that just weren't working here. Right. I, I have bad news. If you're remote. You don't have internet connection. Guess what? You can't connect to. <laughs> well, the, the, I mean, <laughs> the internet connected I mean, device. The, no, the internet was having a problem here, so I couldn't connect to anything to do work off of a computer sitting here. Right. So. Right. Right. But if you're remote and you want to try to power. Oh no 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 no! I, but but the whole point is this thing will do it yeah, automatically until it, automatically. until it comes back. So. There you go. Is that all it took? Was a reboot? No, 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 no. Okay. No. I we still it. don't know what happened to your... I just haven't told you because I'm embarrassed um, what happened. But I have a nice new modem out of it. Yay. I just got an ad for a new modem from Verizon. It's That's the fastest modem yet. They didn't send me the fastest modem yet. They sent me a new version of the exactly same model, but it's red instead mm. of black. So maybe because it's red, it'll be faster. No. Still, still wireless. It's not how that works, sorry. It's not how that works. Nope, 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 nope. nope. That only works for cars. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> not cable modes. I have to talk about hover bikes. I have to talk about hoverboards. I've had them in here. I've been waiting to talk about these all week. Um, so there, there was two things. Um, first of all, we've been, you know, the hoverboards didn't happen in 2015. Um, that's past. It's over. 2016 is not looking 2016. good 2016. No, 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 no. 2016. We have a jet powered hoverboard. Yes. And it apparently broke some kind of record. I was too excited to find out what record it broke. I was just very excited because it was a freaking jet powered hoverboard. And, uh, I think this is him taking off here. Let me let me jump up a little bit. There he goes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> He's like the freaking green goblin at this. Sh- <laughs> Look at this. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, over on the verge, and uh, they actually flew the hoverboard for uh, two thousand two hundred fifty-two meters. That's about seventy-three hundred feet, and far per, uh, surpassing a previous mark set by a Canadian inventor. Uh, so take that, Canada. Uh, and thankfully, mostly over water. Watch out for those rocks. Um, and McFly, if you want to hover over water, you need power. Jet fueled, <laughs> mother power. effing so, so, power. So where? How was that? Like, where's the? I have no idea how this works, <laughs> but it's there, and apparently, it's not a, a an optical illusion. Uh, so, there, so they said. So, so they said. I believe it because it was on the internet. Um, so. <laughs> Uh, but there you go. Is oh, it, it, they have a more heavily produced video version of this as well. Uh, so hey, look, the shoes are attached. That's so great. And there's apparently a hand. Looks like there's a hand control. 
So uh, there you go. But not only was was, was this kind of making making the rounds, but there's also a man. This is apparently, um, I think Ford. Yeah, I, I saw this one. Ford this uh, cool. uh, uh, promoted this. This is a guy. I think this guy just like makes crazy stuff. Ford and Fuhrs presents, and um, this is a hover bike. He put this together in about I think he said about three weekends in the garage. And there's some. Um, the, it really gets into like some of the iterations after the kind of show off here. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's two fans connected in a bike like fashion and it completely works and he's hovering over a field and um man if a pigeon flies into that it is a dead pigeon um but it's for real i uh, i just love it. it's a british guy yelling at me in a tie which completely can get <laughs> caught in the fan and uh it was it was a pretty fun video i actually watched most of this video and it was it was it was a lot of fun and you say there's some early iterations there there's there's just ones where you look like you almost died and this thing in, in apparently his backyard uh but in, and eventually they got him they said it, it takes a lot of learning how to maneuver this thing because it seems to be a little more you know you know, probably a little weight and everything oh yeah and they had to have fireworks to make it completely um um you know terminator i was see i saw like when i was like this is the precursor to a speeder bike from like return of the jedi like i expected them to be like flying through trees and mm -hmm. all kinds of craziness it's a pretty cool concept though yeah yeah he got the work so you never know maybe there could be a consumer version of that sooner or later so um awesome and finally we were talking about cell phone technology earlier i should have looped this into that but guys pour one out AT&T's edge network is going down, man. Well, I'm interested to see what happens when this actually does occur. How many people still on the iPhone one is uh, are, are, are it's, it's not, not going to work anymore? It's right? not just that. Like there's some there's some segments where I'm on my way to work or to or from work and I'm I'm surfing the edge network for a moment or two. Mm -hmm. Like it seems like it's that first network that you connect to and then you kind of go and you're on the LTE. The one you see when you come out of the tunnel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so does that mean I'm just going to connect to the faster network quicker or I'm just going to have to go longer without internet? Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't want. I don't want to go longer without internet. I'd rather have slow internet than no internet. Right. Or, well, there's also like GPRS data I see mm -hmm. pop up in the most extreme of cell coverage situations. I've seen it probably twice in my in my cell phone life in, uh, with an iPhone. Uh, you're in trouble at that point because it's. Uh, I it, think you're in trouble when it says no signal. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're on your way to no signal at GPRS. Listen, I used to sell. I used to. Uh, I attempted to sell cell phones when I think I don't even know if the Edge Network. I think the Edge Network was just happening, and and it was. I was trying to sell AT and T cell phones out of a circuit city i'm a horrible salesman by the way um and the comparative um coverage versus data throughput of digital of tdma and and um gsm like that's that's how far that goes back I, yeah i don't think edge was even a thing when we did that it was just flip phones that could play tetris back then <laughs> so snake what snake, snake. Like a snake. I'm sorry. I have, I've been playing Metal Gear Solid, Solid Three the last week. So oh. I go, snake, which they don't do that as much in that one. So I'm going to go back to uh, uh, two to get that again. Anyways, Alex Cars, thank you so much for joining us this week, sir. Thank you for having me. Uh, where can people check out all the things that you're doing online? All the things. All the things. Um. I'm just about everywhere. It's it's complicated. Including um, Tinder? My port, uh, you can start out uh, at my main site, alexandercars.com. Uh, ha I have links to my portfolio and a lot of other stuff from there. You can follow me on Twitter at alexandercars. Uh, yeah, and if you have any questions about any of the stuff that I do, just contact me on there or on Facebook. Uh, I do various designs. A lot of it, a lot of it's been wrestling based, but I do other designs as well. So, hey, look at that guy giving a testimonial on your website. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Chilla ChillaTech dot net. John Chilla on the Facebook, Chilla on the Twitter, Chilla five seven nine on the Instagram, John Chilla on the LinkedIn. 
Um, chill a photo on the deviant art. Not on Tinder. Not on Tinder. Um, <laughs> and I'll also point out, I, I noticed that you have a follow up write up about um, what you talked about here on the show a couple weeks ago yeah. about your um, armor, laptop armor battle damage situation. Some uh, great picks, and of course, the Hey, look at that convenient <laughs> video from the awesome cast uh, up there it's for perfect you guys to product check out. placement. Yeah, there you go. That works out well. You mm-hmm. need to give me a heads up what you're going to blog so I can make sure to clip it out of the show. Uh, <laughs> oh, no problem. Well, and you know what it is? It's probably going to be more along the lines of the reverse. So it'll mm-hmm. be taking what we clip out of here and then and then blogging on it because it's, okay. it's usually kind of goes okay. in that in that methodology that's the thing of the week that you're interested in mm-hmm. like for instance this week was are we gonna do a so key- i'll probably do a battle with the keyboards so no the battle royale do the battle the keyboards thing and well, that's great we can link it back and forth mm-hmm. and have a synergy and blah you know i'd like to get uh, my goal is to do one post per week minimum on and, and include the show kind of clip and then do one or two additional per month that are probably a little more geared towards enterprise and not necessarily as much consumer. So not something that I'd cover as much on this show, um, but something I do want to kind of probably link more of a LinkedIn type topic than a, than a awesome cast type topic. Nice. So keep, keep your eyes out for that nice. too. That is his game. If you are in the enterprising world, okay. chill is the dude to jam with the mobility 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 i also i also kick all of my cell phone questions and gadget questions basically at him on slack chill what should i do about this <laughs> i want to chill on the slack chill chill i got a, I got a guy that's got a thing he wants to sell <laughs> actually that's happened a couple of times i'll tell you what, the best way to the best thing i do is never look at what you can get for it mm-hmm. on like a gazelle mm-hmm. or apple or whatever look at what they're selling it for and then because that's your real competition because that's your real competition and then yeah. try to craigslist it because there was a galaxy s5 a client wants to get rid of because he just got new like you got like buy one get one for and then you put it on his and then i think his business line and it's like the s7 by the way every time i see the s7 that is a sexy damn phone <laughs> um kraus has one that is a nice phone like i've been i've been seeing it a lot like like people like go check this out i'm like i want to walk away with this this is a good looking phone because <laughs> it's got the curved glass on it and everything and it's it's just a slick phone i would have to mal that you know i would have to put a life proof case on that thing it's not gonna last with me uh but it's a it's a wonderful looking phone but anyways and i found my phone oh you did it's a, it's at work so, did you locate it i located it <laughs> the internet we live in the future and it's so amazing guys you can join us here live dot or the sorgatron media.com couldn't remember the thing uh 6 30 p.m eastern time we talk tech get geeky all kinds of fun stuff uh you can follow us at awesome cast twitter facebook google plus why is that still in there uh email your thoughts and stories to awesome cast at sorgatron media.com subscribe to us on itunes youtube speaker everywhere else rivers age pgh.com uh thursday morning at 8 a.m and check out some other shows up there. They, 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 they got a great thing going on over there. They got a lot of great shows coming up. Uh, a lot of great shows joining, premiering. Um, a really cool thing happening in the area. Please go support them. Thanks to Missy at Rebellious Flaw. She was on the couch last week. And she's uh, doing the tweets this week. Thank you so much for keeping it out there. Keeping it social. And rounding the guys up in the chat room. Our friends Jolo John, Hot Wheels, and the rest of hanging out in there uh this evening uh so thank you to our awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience also thank our awesome patreons this show is a member of the sorgatron media podcast Network. find out more at sorgatronmedia.com